Hey guys, what's up? So I give me a five for five real quick, and we'll get we'll get a cracking and a popping here real fast. So I give me a five for five, and we'll go for it, baby. What's happening? Five. All right, sweet. Hey guys, good to see you guys. Um, I'm just going to give you guys a quick update. Um, I'm also going to be doing an interview. I'm actually getting interviewed myself um, over on the lifeboat here in about a half hour. Um, I'll give you guys a, uh, I'll share a link here in just a few minutes, and um, we'll go that route with it. But first, we're going to do this face weather thing, okay? <laughs> um, anyway, guys, you guys see this? This is an R1 uh, radio blackout. Um, that happened from this M-class flare. Now, it was a pretty significant one, okay? Um, so let me show it to you right here. It's an M3. Right, um, this is spaceweather.com. Here is uh, their captures of it and um, what they're doing over here, guys. So please go check them out over here. Um, they're doing really, really good stuff over here, like always. So please go check them out. They do an awesome job. We're also going to talk about this just for a second, too, here in just a minute. Um, being able to see these sunspots from, you know, from the uh, from the surface here with our naked eye. Um, I don't think a whole lot of us really even thought that that was even possible, um, but it is possible and it's happened countless times, guys. It's just right now we have those conditions to where we can point to it and say, hey, look, guys. <laughs> so um, anyway, so yeah, so that was an M4 flare. Now, just a little bit more, that would have been a Radio 2 blackout. Um, so we'll take a look at these sunspots right here, and um, that definitely is... They're significant, guys. Uh, yeah. So you, if you want to count these up, you can. This is really one sun. It's it's a sunspot grouping. They consider one one spot. So you got one, two, three, four, possibly a fifth if they've named that one yet. We actually got some here in the southern hemisphere that are starting to rotate through. Okay. Um, I look for some action to start happening down here. We could get act activity up here. Um, when you start seeing these cores kind of breaking up like this, um, they do tend to be a little bit more active because they start um, having different polarities and, and it just becomes a little bit more unstable. Um, so when we see these big gigantic sunspots, oftentimes we, we look at them and we're like, why ain't this thing just blowing up? Well, the reason why is because it's stable, right? It, it's just being stable. And that happens a lot with big sunspots and that's why I tell you guys, it needs friends to play with. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, let me um, get moving through here real quick. Um, this is NOAA's uh, prediction center here. Uh, space weather prediction. This is their forecasting. And what you're seeing here, about five days from now, they're expecting us to get a little increase in density. Um, I would assume that that most likely is from a coronal hole stream. Uh, I could be wrong. Uh, it could be like a small CME heading our way. I think there was a really, really faint one. Um, but, you know, again, any kind of activity like the faint stuff, there's no, it's not going to do anything. It's not going to bother our whatever, and, and that's why we don't really tend to focus on that. But we do have stuff happening. So um, let me take you guys over here to Iswa. Oh, let me go back here for just a second. And this is the absorption. The D region absorption, okay, it's what we look at we look when we see flares pop off. And um, so I want to point this out to you guys. These flares, man, they're they're happening roughly about the same time every day. Um, the bigger ones anyway. So watch where these things are popping at. Yeah, this one was kind of right in the middle of the Pacific there. But the ones before these, three or four of them in a row, the bigger ones were over here. I mean, Australia was getting pounded with it. So was, uh, you know, uh, uh, Southeast Asia here. And, you know, New Zealand, Philippines, Japan, all, all this area over here have really been getting a lot of uh, hits from these uh, the x-rays from the flares. Um, what does that mean? Well, it just means that they probably experienced a little bit more um, uh, radio blackouts. And, and, it, and that stuff doesn't typically last very long unless we're talking about big time storming. And um, different frequencies are affected by different amounts of x-ray, just so you guys know. There's high and low frequency, and there's everything in between. 
um, ham, ham radio operators, which is typically what first responders are using. Um, and that's why we talk about it, because it's, it's significant enough that it can affect uh, response times for first responders when you get those radio blackouts. Now, nowadays they have secondary, you know, communications and things that step in. Um, what's crazy is that typically what's bad for uh, ham radio operators or, you know, first responders, um, what's bad for them is actually good for people that use GPS. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, you know, whatever side you're on, um, my suggestion is to have both, but you know, is that too crazy to think? I don't know. We'll see. Um, so yeah, now this is Iswa. So we'll take a look at the, the flare here a little bit closer. And um, you're going to see it here on the 131. And I'm showing you guys the 131 because it really does show it well as far as um, definition and being able to see what's actually happening. And it happened right here, right? That was my thumbnail pick. I just cropped it out a little bit and um, added the title and everything. But as you can tell, okay, it's right in front of Earth. This is SDO. And it sits right outside of basically our atmosphere. And it's always out there looking at the sun orbiting with us around the sun always looking at it now it's out there uh, past the main parts of our atmosphere because it needs to get out there past that so it can get the good the good picks right the atmosphere is a distortion so that's that's why that's why you you know we couldn't really see these gases and stuff unless we were out that far um, and actually guys you know you know somebody was talking about that um, I believe uh, Matthew Shipley was talking about that uh, a couple days ago or yesterday. If you guys haven't had a chance to check out Matthew Shipley, please go check him out. He's doing a heck of a job over there. Um, anytime this stuff is popping, he's got a 24-hour live feed going, showing you space weather conditions, these kinds of uh, HDMI, not HDMI, <laughs> extreme ultraviolet uh, captures, and he does it in a really well-done way. It's very professional looking. Um, he doesn't talk a whole lot during that 24-hour streaming, um, but when events and stuff happen that need to be explained, he does pop on. So just know that. Uh, Matthew Shipley is his channel. Please go check him out. Anyway, so as you got this right here, we are going to uh, take a look at this flare. Again, it's right in front of us. Okay? So right there is when it first popped, obviously. And you see the distortion, how the camera picks up all that high, high uh, energy particles. And... Guys, that tells you how fast these things are moving. That's x-ray, okay? Uh, along with other stuff, too. But the x-rays are moving at the speed of light. It's here in eight minutes, right? I believe if you're going to shoot something out the, like, Pluto, I think it takes I think it takes the light from the sun, like, five, is it five hours to get to Pluto? Something like that. So it, it should give you guys a good idea of actually, you know, we don't oftentimes look at light and think that it has to move. We think it's instantaneous. It's not. Okay? So when you're seeing a star, like, up in the air, <laughs> up in the sky, you know, guys, that, that, that light that you're looking at left so long ago, you know, so, it, you know, that's one of the big, big uh, conversations that get had a lot. Um, it, is, it gets into the philosophical range, and I'm not going to go into all that, so... But anyway, so there is that flare. Now, the next question is, did it pop a CME? Now, if you look here, you can see kind of like a haze there. Now, we can look at a different angstrom. I'm not going to do that right now, um, simply because I honestly, guys, I, I don't have the, I don't have enough time to get to do that right this second. But you can see how the corona and these these uh, arcing number uh, magnetic connection lines here, they're popping off there so it does look like there probably was a small maybe cme with this um i don't look to be a big one and it and just like the one that popped over here um that i showed you guys the other day that was almost the x flare it was the m9.6 essentially an x flare um it really went straight up off the north i mean it went straight up so that, did, that thing ain't coming at us there was a chance when I mean, like i told you guys we had to wait for the data to come in and that's why so anyway, there's that. There's that biggest part of the flare, okay? And you can see how it's kind of peeling off. So I do think there was probably a small CME with that, but I don't think it's significant enough that it's really going to do anything for us. And, and if it was significant, I don't think it's even heading our way. 
Um, <laughs> so, you know, and, and again, guys, it's still fairly early. I haven't really seen all the, the, the hardcore data yet. So, you know, I'm kind of waiting on that to really, you know, just be positive about it. But this is uh, from Soho. This is a satellite in similar position to SDO. It's just closer to the sun. It's still from our perspective, and this is Lasco C2. That's a physical disc on the camera. It blocks the main light of the sun, and so we can even get any kind of uh, action here. Now, I find it interesting, and it sucks that this happened, um, and I'm going to tell you why here in just a second. But right when that flare popped off, let's look at the time. Okay, right there. Okay, so we're looking at 1,300 hours, right? Right here is 1,300 hours, same day. See what happens? <laughs> it jumped three hours. No doubt it. And it's just, it's, it's odd to me. That's all. And I'm not going to go into any of that right now. Um, and I'm not trying to insinuate anything here either. Okay, don't don't get twisted here. Um, all I'm saying is that we don't really get to see the beginning of that that CME if there was one, at least from this perspective. So if we can go over here to Stereo A, which is Earth is over here, what are we looking at? Uh, 1300. Yeah. So this one ain't this one isn't missing any time, and I'm not seeing nothing. So I don't think it's that a CME happened. Um, you know, and again, we wouldn't see it here on Soho anyway until later on. So it's, it's not a, it's not a big deal. I'm not making a big deal about it. I just wish I could have seen those first, those three hours there that were gone. Um, and sometimes actually these things will go into safety mode. Um, when they see like a really, you know, intense blast, they'll go into safety mode to protect the satellite. That happens a lot, actually. Um, and we'll miss a few hours of data. Now, chances are they may put that data back. Not sure. We'll have to see. Um, but yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah. So. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. So. What time is it? Yep. Okay. I got a couple minutes here. We can go into this. All right, so what we got here? Look at all these sunspots, right? One, two, three, four. So five. We can see these three with our naked eye right now. It's amazing to me. It amaz that amazes me every time I say it. Um, you know, being able to see a spot on an object 93 million miles away. Kind of crazy to me. Right here it is. And I'm not going to show you guys too much of this because I want you guys to go give them some love, okay? So please go over here and give them some love. Here's the spots. Now, you're only going to be able to see it in these conditions. Once it starts getting up above and getting more bright in brighter parts of the day, you won't be able to see those unless you have a filter. So, yeah. But, anyway, um, yeah. Let's see here. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry in there, guys. Uh, sorry about that, y'all. But yeah. So. We are going to uh, keep moving here. Uh, yeah. Alright. <laughs> Mods, you guys are having a hard time in there, aren't you? Sorry. Just do your best. That's all you can do, guys. Okay? Yeah, uh, Anna brings up uh, Scott. Uh, Scott's making videos again, guys. So go check out Scott over at Planet X News. He's doing some videos, doing some good stuff over there. Go check him out. Um, and then, let's see here. So, let's do this real quick. All right. Um, let me take you guys to Seeds just for a second. And then... Um, yeah, and I, well, I just showed you everything there. I don't need to take you guys to seeds. So, all right. But, 
anyway, guys, just that that is um yeah, that's what's going on with that flare. I I just think that that's really cool. Um let me do this real quick, like uh let's do this. Go here. Um, all right. Come on, come on, come on, yeah. I'll say, come on, yeah. Y'all got it? Y'all got it? Y'all got it? I'm going to leave you a link there, guys, to the um, the interview I'm getting ready to go do right now. Okay? Um, it's over on the lifeboat. He's, uh, I'm going to get interviewed about my story and about, you know, what what I've been going through and, and all those things that we talk about. Um, actually, where the heck is that at? Maybe it's, is it here? Okay, there it is. Let me, uh, I'm going to drop the link here, guys, for you. Um, I'm going there right now, just so you guys know. And uh, hopefully you guys come check it out. It's good. It's going to be good. I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm brutally honest with what has happened in my life and all that kind of stuff. So please just, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, so come check us out. There is the link to the... Uh, interview, and um, I'm heading over there here in just a minute, and we're gonna in 10 minutes we're gonna be going. So um, I appreciate you guys, and I just wanted to give you guys a quick update, and then tell everybody where I was gonna be here later on. If anything big happens, I will definitely be here. Okay, yeah, Keith, thanks for dropping uh, Matt's uh, Shipley's channel there too. Um, yeah, and remember, guys, um, there's there's uh, channels in my description too. Scott, Plan X News. My, is it is down there in my description box and, and a lot of others guys okay um i think matthews might even be in my description box now um so if you guys ever want that kind of stuff just go to my description box it's there um you know and i'm not going to send you to somebody that you know that i don't that i don't trust or that i don't um that i think is just ridiculous right so anyway you know you know how i am i try to keep it positive and that's what we do so but that's all there but yeah, um, yeah. So we will definitely be uh, get going. Thanks, Becca, Christine. I'll see you guys there. Hey, Finch. What is that? Keeping your mouth. Oh, keeping your mouth shut. I don't even know what that even means. Anyway, uh, we'll we'll just get going, guys. So we will definitely see you. Okay. Um, Yeah. <laughs> I need more subs? What are you talking about, man? What are you talking about, birthday? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. All right, guys. I'm going to pop off here. All right, guys. God bless. Yahusha saves. You can drink this Kool-Aid.